Earlier we watched videos on how to solve exponential equations by getting the same base on both sides. The problem is most of the time it's actually impossible to get the same base on both sides, and so we need another plan. If we can't get the same base on both sides, our next option is to take the log or natural log of both sides. And notice when I wrote log, I did not write a base. That implies that the base is 10. For the ln, I did not write the base. That implies the base is e. And the reason we take one of those two is calculators generally have one or both of those buttons on them. So we can use the calculator to find the exact value using those buttons on our calculator. Another important property that we have for logarithms And there are lots of properties of logarithms, and you'll take a closer look at those in your pre-calculus classes. But for now, the one property that we're going to use is that the log base a of b to some exponent. If there is an exponent inside of a logarithm, it can move out front and be rewritten as x log base a of b. So it moves out front as a factor instead of as an exponent on the b. That's going to allow us to solve. Let's look at some examples, starting with solving 2 to the w equals 1,432. Let's use ln on this first one. We can use log or ln. They both do the same thing. By taking the ln of both sides, that's going to move the exponent out in front, giving me w natural log of 2 equals the natural log of 1,432. Now that I've used that property, we now have w times the natural log of 2. So to get the w alone, we just have to divide by the natural log of 2 on both sides. And that's going to give me w equals the natural log of 1,432 divided by the natural log of 2. And because my calculator has a natural log button, I can type this in the calculator just like it looks. But be careful, when your calculator hits the natural log button, it probably is going to open a parentheses. So make sure you also close the parentheses at the end of the natural log. So we've got natural log parentheses 1,432 divided by natural log parentheses 2. When we do that, w is equal to about 10.484, and we've solved. Let's try another example. Let's try one with a fraction. Let's do 2 fifths to the x equals 5 eighths. Now we can do either natural log or log. Both work exactly the same. We did natural log last time, so let's use log this time. Taking the log of both sides still grabs that exponent and moves it out front, giving us x log of 2 fifths equals the log of 5 eighths. Now, because we've got the x times the log, to get the x alone, we'll divide both sides by the log of 2 fifths. That will reduce out, giving us x is equal to the log of 5 eighths divided by the log of 2 fifths, which if we put that into our calculator, making sure we close parentheses appropriately, we get x equals 0.513 approximately. Let's try one last example. Let's do e to the x equals 14. Now, e to the x implies that it's better to use a log base e, because this one already has a base e. So we're going to use the natural log on this one. We could use log. It's just a little more work. But by using the natural log, this grabs the exponent and moves it out front, giving us x natural log of e equals the natural log of 14. Now what's nice, another slick trick that we can use is if we've got the natural log of e where the base matches what's inside it, that's going to be equal to 1. Similarly, if I had a base 10, the log base 10 of 10 will also equal 1. And so by having the natural log of e, that's going to equal 1. 1 times x is just x. And so I end up with x is equal to the natural log of 14. And that I can just put into my calculator like it is. And I end up with x equals 2.63.
9. So that's how we can solve an exponent problem when we can't get the same base on both sides. We'll take a log or a natural log of both sides and have our calculator do the hard work. Sometimes there's a little algebra we have to do, though, to finish out the problem, and that's what we're going to look at in our next video.